Hello, and thank you for joining this OncLive Peer Exchange entitled Advances in Systemic Therapy for Melanoma. We've made enormous strides in developing novel therapies for advanced melanoma over the last six years, particularly in the field of immuno-oncology where melanoma has been at the forefront of paradigm-defining progress. We continue to see new advances at an accelerating pace as we learn more about the disease itself and how to treat it. Today, I'm joined by a panel of international experts in the field of melanoma research. Together, we will discuss the studies presented at ESMO 2017, and we'll provide you with perspective on how those data relate to clinical practice. I'm Dr. Jeffrey Weber. I'm a professor in the Department of Medicine and Deputy Director of the Laura and Isaac Perlmutter Cancer Center, as well as Co-Director of the Melanoma Research Program at the NYU Langone Health Center in New York City. Participating today on our distinguished panel are Dr. Reinhard Dumer, professor at the University of Zurich and vice chairman of the Department of Dermatology at the University Hospital in Zurich, Switzerland. Dr. Axel Hausschild, professor and head of the Department of Dermatology in the Interdisciplinary Skin Cancer Center at the University Hospital Schleswig-Holstein in Kiel, Germany. Dr. Michael Postow, who is a medical oncologist at the Memorial Sloan Kettering Cancer Center in New York City and Dr. Caroline Robert, Chairman of the Dermatology Committee at the Gustave Roussy in Paris, France. Thank you so much for joining us. Let's begin. First, Caroline, tell me about your personal approach to using immunotherapy in patients with metastatic disease. How do you make decisions as to what to use and how to use it? So it is true that for the last years, we have totally changed our way of treating patients. If you imagine somebody having stopped working in the field and coming back now, he would not be able to use any of the drugs that we use today. So immunotherapy is a, a revolution. And I must say that if I have a patient with a disease that is not growing too rapidly, that is not immediately threatening, I would choose immunotherapy as a first choice. And if, you, if your question concerns which immunotherapy to use, well, I would say it depends because right now, combination of immunotherapy with ipilimumab plus nivolumab or anti-PD-1 only, like we have two possibilities, pembrolizumab or nivolumab, it depends on the country. And in France, presently, we don't have the reimbursement for the combination, but it's going to happen very soon. And do you routinely use PDL1 staining to make decisions as to who to treat or how to treat them? I do PDL1 staining, but I do it in a research perspective. I don't rely on that for one particular patient. We know that the predictive positive and negative value is not very good at the individual level. This is not a good enough biomarker, but this is interesting and we work on that in the lab to try to identify other markers more uh, predictive. And we do have a couple of choices, at least with respect to the PD-1 antibodies approved in most countries in the EU, Canada, Australia, the US for melanoma. Do you think there's any difference or are there any data to support there being a difference between pembrolizumab and nivolumab? I don't think so. I don't think so. I think they have the same efficacy, the same safety profile. So the, the, the regimen is different. One is given every two weeks, one is given every three weeks. I'm not sure actually this has a, a rationale to inject every two or every three weeks, but this is how we, we prescribe the drug. And I presented at the ASMO meeting, at, at the present ASMO meeting, the, the long-term result of patient, especially the good patient, the patient who have a complete response. And we have data from pembrolizumab, we have data from nivolumab, we have data from the combination nivolumab and ipilimumab. And what we can say from this data is that if you have a complete response, it's m in most of the time now we have long follow-up, it's durable. And the vast majority of these patients responding completely are still in complete response after a median follow-up of close to four years. So this is very about, good news. What about the stable patients, though? You know, you get a lot of patients who have a suboptimal response or yeah. maybe have stable disease. Let's ask others, if you treat someone with Pembro or Nevo up front and you get just stability, what, what's your next move? 
If I have stabilization, actually I continue the treatment and uh, I can, there are a number of patients who see a delayed response and, and actually some patients don't really show a shrinkage, especially if we start with, with uh, a low tumor burden. So this does not really make me nervous, even in situations where I have a patient, let's say elderly patient who has an oligometastatic disease and only one lesion is starting to grow. We have resected some of these lesions. We do stereotactic irradiations if the, dis the disease is controlled. So a number of patients are still on treatment despite what I would call a, a minor progress. And there are data on, on treatment beyond progression that, that uh, really support this strategy. I guess that's part of the Rip Van Winkle effect. You were thinking of Rip Van Winkle, the man who went to sleep for a huge l amount of time and then woke up and the world was completely changed. Ah, yes. Yeah, so that, that sounds like something that we would never have done. Uh, would you agree? Exactly. Yeah, I, I, I would agree, but uh, I think we have uh, data from ASCO which are indicating that even patients with a stable disease have a long-term benefit. I was surprised to see the first analysis of CRs, the duration of CRs, the duration of PRs, which is very much reflecting the situation of CRs, and for the very first time, the duration of stabilized diseases. And obviously, you know, if you give immunotherapy, this matters, which means the patient has some sort of benefit. Even if you stop the treatment for various reasons, it could be toxicity, exactly. willingness of patients to be treated, you know, you still have a good response, which is maintained. And, you know, and therefore, I wouldn't change unless the patient is aiming for a complete response. And we all know the complete responders are the patients where we discuss carefully a cure in our days.